All right, my brother, in this video, I'm gonna talk about the best relationship advice that you've probably never heard of. Most people gloss over a very key fact that is a relationship goes both ways. They're gonna say that mostly the problems of the relationship hinge on the man. And while that may be the case in some where the guy is really just not doing what he's supposed to be doing for himself and he gives himself up for his family, the other side of the coin is, is that he allows his wife or his woman or everybody else in his life to just take over. This whole purpose of having a two-way relationship means that you have to also be the one to enforce what's going on in your relationship. As the man, you are the one who is in charge of ensuring that the relationship is going in the proper direction. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. And you're not gonna know what direction to take your relationship unless you have a good direction for your life, some sort of a compelling vision, something that drives you forward that you wanna achieve in your life. And you wanna do this because as you start achieving this thing in your life, you can now take this as a legacy for your children. And so legacy isn't just the money that you leave them, it's how you are, it's your behaviors, it's your lifestyle, it's how you operate in life, your principles, your values, your religion, how you wanna leave this for your children and how you want it to keep going on past you. You don't have to have the entire legacy played out, but you have to have at least some part of some compelling vision for you so that you have a direction to take the entire family. Because if you don't have this compelling vision in your family, then what ends up happening, you end up going into a place by default. And most men, most people, most families, they get to this place where I'm gonna run this business until I retire, maybe I can sell it. And it's like, okay, that's great. What's gonna happen next? Are you gonna sell it to your kids? Do they even wanna do this? Are your kids small? Are they small children? Do they even know what this is? And so guys don't usually have a compelling vision for their life, or what happens is, is they just get so caught up in the day to day, they forget what's happening. And then over the course of the next five, 10, 15 years, they lose this fire in their belly of why they even did what they were doing to begin with. I just got off a coaching call with a client who was in this place right now. He got to this place where he was feeling really good financially, but then all of a sudden he doesn't know where he wants to go anymore. The pain of the past, this pressure for him to prove himself, to move forward, to prove that he wasn't broke like the rest of his family, that he could get over into this place where he has his financial abundance. Now that that's there, he doesn't have this pressure of the past pushing him forward anymore. So he doesn't have anything to pull him forward to a greater future. And so we spent the last three months, we've been crafting this in great detail, what this new compelling vision is for his future so that he can take his new woman and a new family that he's created into this new vision. Because if he doesn't have that, he's not gonna know the context for which he's gonna have this woman in his life. If he doesn't know what the context is, he can't really lead her effectively to whatever that is. And she's not gonna trust the direction that he's gonna go in. She won't really know where they're going with their life. In other words, if that compelling vision is strong enough for him, he'll make sure that that happens for himself, for his family, for his children, before anything else happens. Now this is something that she can really trust. And so most guys don't have this, and so their woman on some level don't really intrinsically trust the man in his direction because he doesn't have it. He hasn't really gotten clear on what it is that he truly wants. All he's thinking about is, how can I find a woman who loves me and how can I make a few dollars so that I don't feel broke? And so he doesn't really think about what's the greater purpose of this vision in himself and his life. Even if you have this perfect vision or this great vision, if you pick the wrong woman, you're just wasting your time. Most guys settle for what I call the 80% girl. The 80% girl is the girl that she's most of what you want. She's good enough, she doesn't really have any red flags. She's decent enough, attractive, but she doesn't really knock your socks off but she sticks around for a long time. And this is, you can tell this is going on. If you've been in this long-term relationship, you're like, well, I don't know if I really want to marry her. She's cool and all, I'm just gonna see what happens. You're in the 80% girl relationship. Now, if you're talking about, I don't want to be married because of all the legal implications and all this stuff in society, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking to a woman that you're like, this is my ride or die. This is the woman I definitely want to be with. This is the woman who is 95% compatible with you and it's the same on her side with you. And most guys don't do this because it's hard work. It's hard work to go and hold out and get good enough to find a woman who matches you well. To find a woman who can really meet you on the level that you can be met. Most guys go and they date a woman who's below his economic station or below his education level. Now while that's great and all, the problem is, is now she's completely supported by him. So anything happens to him, she's all, everything falls apart. And that might be okay on some level, but on another level he's not going to really respect her. He's not going to really feel like she's an equal for him. 
And the thing is, he, she doesn't have to be necessarily an equal, but she needs to be up there close to where he's at. She needs to be able to roll with him where he's going, or at least be like his greatest cheerleader. If she can't roll with you in the way that you're going, then she needs to at least be your greatest cheerleader and really support what you're doing. And if you get with somebody's like the 80% girl, typically what you've done is you're dating somebody who's too far below you on the scale and she's just happy to have your attention. But the thing is, is you're just like, I'm in this in-between place because I don't know if I can get anybody better. And so there's a huge cost to staying with this person. When you stay with the 80% girl, it robs you of the ability to stand in your power and really go out there and date the kind of women that truly deserve you. And so what happens is, is because you're in this, it robs you of your power in your business. It robs you in your power when you're with your children. You, it will pull you out of your being on fire, let's fucking go attitude, because you're with this person who's just not really what you want. You think she's, she's pretty good, but you could think you can do better. And because you think you can do better, what ends up happening is she feels this, and she's like, he's going to leave me at some point for somebody better, for somebody more beautiful, for somebody smarter, somebody thinner. And the thing is, is that in your mind, you're thinking, yeah, she's right, I will. And this destabilizes your relationship, and so it ends up causing even more problems, because now you're trying to make her feel better about things, but you can't tell her the truth that she's not quite what you want, because that'd be the end of the relationship. It caused you problems. So what you do is you say, okay, let's just wait a little bit longer. Let's just wait. I'm not really ready for marriage. And so you being with the 80% girl just means that you don't value yourself enough to hold out or go find the kind of woman you really want to be with. And it also tells you all the time that you're failing. Every time you look at her, you're failing. And so the 80% girl is a massive trap that you cannot be with this woman. You cannot be in that situation. You need to end that and go find somebody better, somebody who matches you where you are or where you are going. You'll hear this bad advice all the time. To have a good relationship, you must fight. And I disagree. You have collisions, sure, disagreements and things that you're trying to figure out, but you don't get into a fight. Because as a man, you should not be, be reactionary to your wife. You should be reacting to everything. Now you can respond to her. You can stop, take a breath, be very conscious and deliberate in how you are in your actions and depersonalize all the crazy she's throwing at you and find out what the heart of the issue is. Lay out all your cards on the table, get what's going on with her and actually be present in what's happening. You getting reactionary and meeting her energy level with emotion is just going to stir it up even more. You're never going to get to the end of it because what she's looking for, she's looking for you to lead her back into her heart. She's not looking for you to get into a fight with her. She's coming out of her heart. Something is happening in the relationship or in her life that's destabilizing things. She's going to be going on her intuition to try to figure out what's wrong in this situation. And because she's going completely on intuition doesn't necessarily mean she's always going to be right. And because she's not always going to be right, it means that you have to facilitate this process to help come to the solution that she's looking for. The solution could be she just needs to feel heard and understood that she's having a moment and she just needs somebody to be there with her. She might actually have a problem that needs solved, but she doesn't need you to jump to the conclusion and say this is the solution when she's not even sure that that is really the correct course of action. And so you getting in there and reacting and saying, oh, I'd get defensive, get all upset, just shows her that you're not really present with her, that you don't have emotional control of yourself. And all she's doing is like, now she has to worry about how she talks and how she acts because now she's gonna take responsibility for how you respond to it because you can't control your own emotional state. As the man in the relationship, your job is to create structure. And what do I mean by structure? One, you should know why you do the things that you do. You should have boundaries in your household. You should have an organized life. You should have a schedule and you should keep to it. And you should be disciplined in what you're doing and why you're doing these things. If you let your wife run the show and it gets all discombobulated, and disorganized, the house is a mess and everything, there's no structure here. And so her, she's going to go mainly off of her emotional state, what feels good in the moment, what feels right to her. She's going to go intuitively about where she wants to go. And you as the man, provide the logic and structure as to how this needs to go out. Now, when we have a conversation, whether we make a plan, okay, like who's going to delineate the duties within the household, who does the dishes and who does the laundry and who does the cooking, or maybe we hired it out. You have this conversation with her about how it should be done, but getting upset because she didn't do something you wanted and you say, well, we agreed to it. And she just didn't do it. Just shows that you didn't provide the proper structure for it to get done. And then the structure wasn't enforced properly in a way that got her buy-in. And so for guys who are like, yeah, she always undermines my authority with the kids. It's like, yeah, because there's probably no consistent structure with the authority on how the kids should behave. And so this is what's going on. If you don't have a budget, this means that you, you, she's spending too much money. It means there's no structure in the house and how you should spend money and what's important to spend things on. There isn't this buy-in from her. And so this problem with structure is massive for guys. 
They don't have it because they don't have structure within themselves. Look at how many men are out there that are overweight. Look at the guys out there who can't do the things that they know they should be doing. They're too afraid to get that promotion. They're too afraid to go start that business. And they're too afraid to have these conversations with their kid. Or maybe they don't want to play with their kids. Maybe they want to sedate all the time and drink beer and watch football. Or they just want to be out with their friends all the time. See, this is not a guy who's creating structure. He's not creating structure because he doesn't really, he's not really present in the household. So he doesn't know what needs to happen. He's like, I'm just going to let her deal with it. I'm going to let her deal with all the stuff at home. Let her deal with all the structure, which isn't her job. Her job isn't to provide structure. That's your job as the man. Also, part of this is creating safety. Now, most guys know what safety is. It's like, I'm going to protect my family. Great. Awesome. You can protect your family physically, right? You should be fit in your body and athletic on some degree. You should be able to financially provide for your family and protect them. And you should also provide the emotional safety in the house. In other words, you don't allow crazy shit to happen. You don't allow name calling or yelling or anything like this. This falls under the structure category to an extent. But also this means that when your wife expresses herself or your children express themselves, it is a safe place to do so. There's no judgments. You don't react to it emotionally and get all upset. You watch it, you observe it, you depersonalize what's happening and then you respond in a conscious way accordingly. You being able to provide emotional safety for your wife and your children is paramount. Because if she doesn't feel that she's emotionally safe with you, she's going to start hiding things from you. And by hiding things means that she's just not going to divulge shit to you anymore. So you say, hey, baby, let's have sex tonight. And she's just like, I'm, I'm just not interested. And you say, like, why not? This is a sign of her holding things back from you because she doesn't feel emotionally safe to share this with you. Probably because you came unhinged, or you got upset, or you started accusing her of things, and you got really emotional about it instead of trying to figure out why she isn't able to be open to you in that moment. When she feels safe with you, she will open to you. She'll want to talk to you. In fact, when you facilitate this properly and you get this down for a while, then what will happen, you will be the first person she comes to to open up about things because it helps her lead her back into her heart and to be open, which is really what she wants to do. So guys, we, don't, we keep trying to penetrate. Get in there and like, what's the problem? You're going to tell me. And it's just, that's not what she needs. You have to create a safe environment where she's open to receive what you have to give. Because guys don't have structure. They can't create emotional safety. They're reactionary. What ends up happening is that their home life gets marred by all this heavy shit. They're not having fun anymore. She's upset. The house is a mess. The kids are undisciplined. They're doing whatever they want. They're on the screens all the time. And everybody's just sedating and hiding out. And this is the sign of a codependent relationship where nobody's getting anything done because the guy failed to create the structure and discipline and everything else around the house. And so because of this, nobody can have fun anymore. The whole reason you got together in this relationship because you enjoyed each other's company. You loved hanging out. But because these things weren't handled in the relationship, now everything becomes this, we're just trying to play catch up. And she's overwhelmed all the time with her endless to-do list. And you're trying to hide out just hoping things are going to get better. Wondering when she's going to stop being depressed. Wondering when she's going to turn around and like want to be with you some more. And she can't be with you because she's completely overwhelmed because of all the chaos in her life. She's relying on you to bring the order and discipline and the emotional safety and keep everything together. And when you don't do this, everything gets really heavy. And then she's going to need space from you to go figure out what's going on in her mind because she's overwhelmed all the time. And all she knows is that when she's out of this house, she feels better so that she wants more space to be away from you. Because when she's in the house, she's not more free. When she's in the house, she's being a mother. She's handling everything. And I'm not saying you should do all these things for her, but what I am saying is we're creating the structure for which everybody operates. Everybody can take a step back and be like, okay, this is where we all reside and this is what we're all supposed to do. Okay, that makes sense. She can relax into that. And when she can relax into that, this is where the playfulness can now come. She's going to be more playful and more open and more feminine and moving and flowing with you and joking with you when she can be safe. And you being the facilitator of this, having a good attitude, keeping things light, don't letting things get heavy, dealing with things, dealing with collisions and troubles is always best done with a little bit of humor. And bringing this playfulness into your relationship is key. Your wife needs you to play with her. She needs you to have fun with her. She needs you to dance with her. She needs you to get her into her heart, bring her into a happy and elevated state of consciousness. You can do this, bring her back into this playful state. She's going to love you forever because you're leading her back into her heart. Because most guys are so fearful of being alone and they're so fearful of who they are as a person, like they feel really insecure inside, they tend to go look at their wife to make them feel better. And they do this because they don't have any life outside of their wife. And people do this all the time. And wives do it as well. They lose their friends and things that they like to do and they just make their family their entire life. 
And what ends up happening is your only source of validation, your only source of social interaction comes from your relationship, and it's not healthy when you do that. And so when you do this with your wife and all of your validation, all of your approval starts coming from her, namely through sex or some sort of sexual interaction, then what ends up happening is it destabilizes the relationship because now you're chasing after her all the time. You're supposed to go get approval out there in the world and go crushing it. Get confidence by going and meeting your goals and doing cool and fun things. That's where you get approval. You get it from in inside yourself and by going and doing cool things in the world. And so when you go and you do this with your wife and you try to get approval from her, you're trying to pull on her for attention all the time because you don't feel secure in yourself. What ends up happening is she sees that you're just not strong. You're not strong in yourself. You're not strong to go out there in the world and go do some cool shit. And you have to come home and you're just like, okay, baby, make me feel better about myself. Tell me I'm a good little boy. And what ends up happening, she becomes your mother. She becomes your mother. She can't be your lover. And so this is why she doesn't want to have sex with you. And she'll tell you, I don't really understand why I'm not in the mood. And they won't understand it because she'll try to be supportive of you. She'll try to tell you what you want to hear. She'll try to tell you that you're doing well and that you should believe in yourself and all this stuff. But this is stuff that you should do for yourself. And if you can't do it, you should go surround yourself with other powerful men who will kick you in the dick and get you to move forward in a healthy and loving way. But if you're leaning on your wife to do this, realize this isn't her job. Your job is to be the man and go out there and provide and provide structure and safety and go do some cool shit in the world and then bring your family along with you. It's not her job to prop you up and you can't prop yourself up and this is part of the problem. She doesn't want to be with that guy. She wants to be with a self-starter. You have to be a man of integrity. In other words, do you keep your word? Do you keep your commitments? When you tell your kids you're going to play with them and wrestle tonight, do you actually go and do that? Or do you push them off? Or do you forget to do things you don't want to do because you just don't want to do anything because you're tired and you need to relax? And the problem with this is a sedation mechanism when you don't do the things that you need to do. And so this doesn't elicit trust from your wife. And if she keeps seeing this all the time and you keep lying to her essentially, then she starts trusting you. And if she doesn't trust you, then these resentments start to harbor and then she doesn't want to be around you. And now you start getting these belittling comments from her. You start getting these backhanded remarks like, well, well, you wouldn't know that anyway. And what she's doing is she's trying to provoke you into collision so that you can call and solve this problem. But most guys don't want to do that. They're like, well, she's just being a bitch. It's like, no, the problem is you've done something and now she's trying to show you that you've done something in this way and now you have a chance to collide with her and actually figure out what it is. Now, she may be completely wrong and what you did was valid and you'll have that collision and then you'll come to some conclusion. Or you'll find that you probably didn't stick to your word or you were out of integrity in some way of your of how you're operating and then you'll have another collision, you'll humble yourself and then what you'll do is you'll make an immediate pivot. You don't need to explain why you did everything wrong, she just needs to know that you're going to make a pivot. That you're going to change and like from now on this is how I'm going to operate and then you actually go do what you say you're going to do. And trust is important for your wife. Most of what your wife is doing with you is trying to find some sort of safety with you. She's trying to find like, am I safe in this relationship to express myself and to be who I need to be and be safe to have the kind of things that we want to have in our life. If not, you're going to start running into these kind of problems. Now it's not your job necessarily to make her feel safe all the time, but it's your job to create a safe environment for which she can cultivate. And if she can't feel safe in that environment, then she may have to work on her own psychology to get herself to understand how to trust again. Some people have a lot of traumas in their life and they can't trust no matter what kind of safe environment they're in. And so if you find that's the case, then obviously she needs to work on herself. But for you, you being as trustable as possible and creating a trusting environment is absolutely necessary to have a healthy relationship. You have to be able to skillfully open your woman up. Now there's a lot of books on things about this like Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and then they have like love languages and stuff. But really all they are is dancing around. One key thing is when my wife is in a situation or she is closed off, how do I open her up again so that she feels love? That's really what it comes down to. How do we be present with her and get her to be in presence with you so that she can open up, feel safe to open with you? Now this is gonna require some work on her end. And so for the wife, she can't just necessarily say, well, I just don't feel loved and he just needs to do whatever he can to just evoke love within me, as if she doesn't have any say in the matter of opening. So her being able to open is a skill she needs to also cultivate. In other words, when you give a bid for affection, you're saying, hey, this is how I'm, and she needs to recognize this and open up to it. Now, with that being said, there are ways that she's gonna be more open for it than others. And this is where like maybe the love languages could help. But really at the end of the day, 
you being able to skillfully open your woman up is key. And every woman's gonna be a little bit different. Some women need a little bit of humor. Some women need you to move them in their body, get them dancing or something. Some need you to just hold them. Some need you to be fully present with them and engaged in dialogue. Some need you to just kind of be with them for a while until they just kind of let down and open up. But either way, there needs to be a considerate and deliberate knowledge of this process you and her are engaging in to open up. And when you get your wife to open up, you get your woman to open up, you know the difference. You can feel that, that she's open and receptive to you. She's back on your team. And so you have to have these conversations of like, what opens you up? How can I open up? And you have to skillfully and definitely maneuver this game so that you can do this with her. Now, she's going to do the same thing with you. Any healthy relationship, the woman's going to be doing her part as well to open you up and get you back into your heart, get you back into not into work mode and, and being all hard ass on the things and your goals and being on fire in your life. She's going to want to bring you back into the space of, hey, we're back with the family now. We're not in the business. We're not at work anymore. You're here with the kids. Let's talk about that. Let's be present. Let's not be off in like strategery mode. And so you guys both in this place, being able to open yourselves up, open the other person up and get you back into this space of intimacy is absolutely key. There's nothing wrong with maintaining the differences between the man and the woman in the relationship. In fact, I would encourage you to maintain that. So for you and your relationship, you provide a lot of structure and safety and support. And then from her, she's going to bring a lot of empathy and compassion and bringing the heart back into the relationship, bringing you back into presence telling you, hey, let's live now instead of in this future goal that we're trying to get. Your family is here right now. Let's be with the kids. Let's be compassionate. Let's have some intuitive dialogue on what's going on in the emotional space. Now, you learning how to do this is good, and her learning how to do what you do is good as well, but you always want to maintain that separation because this is why you're together. You're there to help each other, complement each other on the way that you are, the way that you operate. And so one way to just get really back into like your own masculine pole is just to slow the fuck down. Slow your speech down. Be deliberate in the way that you're talking. Start being fully present in the here and the now. This alone, this practice alone will do massive wonders in your relationship. This will do massive wonders for your children and how you interact with them. Just slowing it down, watching them, observing them, and seeing what's going on. Just being still. Most men are so in their mind trying to figure out the next move that they're never just present. And this is the thing that most women yearn for from a man, is just him to be present and paying attention to her and hearing and feeling her. Your kids are asking for the exact same fucking thing. And it's not that difficult, but most men won't cultivate the ability to just slow down. And if you can do that for yourself, it's going to make a massive difference in your relationship. The one thing your woman never wants to ever see leave from you is your ambition. She wants to feel that if anything else, she can rely on the fact that your ability to get out there and fucking produce will never stop. I can't tell you how many guys have come into my programs where their wives have cheated on them because one, the guy decided to be a stay-at-home dad, which is fine and admirable, but the problem is, is now that economic disparity is like this and now she's surrounded with a bunch of other ambitious alpha dudes not even maybe alpha, but just ambitious guys around her. And she's starting to compare those guys to him. And then from her perspective, her husband's a loser. And she'll never tell him this because he's got an admirable job. And he's doing what she probably asked him to do. But the thing is, is that attraction isn't a choice. And so what ends up happening in this space is that she's seeing this as a comparison to these other guys. These other guys are crushing it compared to, she's crushing it compared to her husband. And so she sees herself as, well, I, why am I with this guy? I should be with these kinds of guys. And she comes home to him and she's like, I don't want to sleep with this guy anymore. Now he could try to make up for it by doing other things like having structure and being calm and present in the family. And he can do this and he can actually make up for it. But he's got to be super strong in the other domains. Because if he's not super strong in the other domains, she's going to see him as weak. And for most guys who are doing this, who are in this position where his wife is making more money than him, what ends up happening is, is that he defers decision making to her. He sees her as the one who is in charge. Her is the one who is providing the structure. And he advocates the throne of being the man as well. So not only is he being the woman 
in this relationship, she's also making the money and providing us so she doesn't want to be with him. And the other type of guy that we get cheated on quite, quite often in the program is the guy just loses his ambition. He gets depressed and starts drinking. And his wife's like, well, you can do better. Maybe he gets laid off from his job or something. And he goes to like three or four months or a year of this shit. And she's like, what are you going to do? I guess I'm going to have to provide for everybody now. And then she sees him as this weak guy who can't provide and he's untrustworthy and he's not really the guy that she can rely on. He's not a rock anymore. He's got too many emotional problems. As a man, you cannot lose the ambition in your life for what you want to do and where you want to go. You can have a moment. I'm not saying you have to be on a thousand percent every day. What I'm saying is that you have to have the target. And you can go there slowly or you can go there quickly. But you have the target and you have the ambition. And what she can rely on is that you'll always go towards that even if it means leaving her. This is how she knows she can really trust it. Because if it means you will go for that goal, even if it means leaving her, because you are more invested in the legacy that you're leaving for your children and the impact you have on the world, this is something that she can trust. And this is what she wants. Because she doesn't want you to leave, obviously. She wants that security. But she also wants you to be this savage businessman. And so she's always looking for this balance between, is he too savage or is he safe enough to provide for me and my family? Well, brother, I hope this has been helpful for you. Most guys that I know go into the pit in some form or fashion in their life because they don't know how to operate in their relationship. They don't know how to lead properly. They don't know how to provide structure or safety. They don't know how to show ambition. They don't know how to have this let's fucking go attitude. And what ends up happening is they just lose themselves. They lose themselves into trying to please somebody else, please their wife, and hopefully if they please her enough, she'll sleep with them. And this di dynamic is terrible because he's just chasing after her and he should never be the one to chase. If the guy should be chasing after his dreams and, his, and the things that he wants to do in the world and then she wants to be a part of that ride. But as soon as he reverses the game and starts chasing her, and then she's like, we're not going anywhere. We're just spinning around me. And while some women might like this for a while, for a season, she might like that security and safety because women are always looking for security and safety in their men and in the world. Ultimately, it's going to kill her drive and attraction for you, and then she's not going to know why she doesn't want to sleep with you, and neither, neither are you. And you're going to come to this conundrum, and you're like, well, nobody knows what the problem is. And so you being fully present and accountable to your life and your goals is absolutely crucial in your relationship. We've had over 3,500 success stories in the Broken About Us program. We've dealt with guys whose wives left them or cheated on them. We deal with a lot of narcissism as well. And I know that term is thrown out around a lot these days, but we know the signs very well. So that's why we have a program that's so successful. I got a question for you. What do you think is the most important quality a man should have in a relationship? Leave a comment below. I'm curious to see what you have to say. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one.